Hello everyone and welcome to my channel And today I'll be reading Skirmish Six Listener by me And if you happen to hear my cat in the background, just ignore her Because she wants to eat my sandwich Anyway, let's get into it Skirmish tried his very best to knock away that vulnerable part of himself Somewhere far away Somewhere where no one could reach and I guess by allowing you in and letting himself smile at your words and be happy when you're happy and feel the love between you two and share it, that vulnerable part only allowed you in. His emotions were difficult to manage when you're around because somehow the mask always slipped off. When you were there in front of him. But he trusted you. Trust. That was the most important part of this. For Skirmish. Because to him. He thinks that he only lets you in. Because he trusts you. And that's the truth of it. He wouldn't let himself smile in front of anyone else. Or say his true feelings. Because he knows. They could be used against him. They will always be used against him, no matter what he does. So, it won't hurt if he only lets you in, right? You won't hurt him. He never will. You're too good for that. At least, that's what you always told himself. When one part would always lament him and tell him that he was being stupid to try this again, to let another human into his heart. Because before, that only ever ended in hurt. In betrayal. He didn't want it like that again. But it's not like he had any other way to go about things. He loved you and he had fallen too deep. So now, he could only trust you. And hope it goes well. For once. But it seems like, even then, even such a simple wish like that, the universe would not grant him. Because right now, seated in front of you, you were yelling at him. Words that struck his heart and made it shatter, bleed from the very core. That's because of what he had said to him. He told him he was heartless and sensitive once he found out that he was a Fatui. He knew he was absolutely in the wrong for hiding his identity from you. It was not okay, and it betrayed the very idea of trust. But what else was he meant to do? Tell you the truth, and have you abandon him? He couldn't. He just couldn't bring himself to, because he was scared, terrified of what would come after. And honestly, he was right to be, because right now, no pain in the world could describe the pain he was feeling. How could you say that about him? He had never hurt you, and he was trying to atone for his wrongs. Ever since he got with you, he felt something within him change. And he thought, he thought that someday, he would be able to tell you and be forgiven. But for you to go so far, and call him all the things he's ever been terrified to hear, it hurts him. And he can't help when the tears come down, streaming down his cheeks, even as he looks away, trying to hide them, too ashamed to face you that way, and a little bit scared too, scared, because right now, it seemed like all the care that you had for him was gone, so you'd obviously have fun driving at him, for being so weak and pathetic. For crying in a way that he shouldn't have. Wyan, if you want to leave me, then do so. I deserve it, he said. And you could hear him crying. His voice choked up. And something within you, as mad as you were, you just couldn't bring yourself to destroy him when he was already down. So you walk over to him, slow. And put a gentle hand on his shoulder, squeezing it. Skirmish. I... 
I'm sorry. I mean it. I shouldn't have treated you that way. I shouldn't have said anything like that at all. I know how hard it was for you to trust me. And I guess that's why you couldn't tell me, right? I know your position as a harbinger. It's a very bad one. And I'm mad at you. But I didn't mean everything I said. I promise. So, so don't you cry, okay? You said. Honestly, you were trying not to cry as well. Because never in your life would you have imagined your boyfriend crying like this. Scaramouche, who was such a tsundere, who was always pouting or being grumpy, who always had a hard time with his own emotions, crying because of a few words you said. It wasn't something you wanted to do. Something they wanted to be the cause of. Or see at all. So that's why you wrap him into your arms. Cradling him. And hold him close. And he cries even harder. Melting into you. Wrapping his arms tightly around your waist. And apologizing. Over and over and over. Telling you he didn't mean to hide it from you. Telling you that he had no choice but to do so. Because what else could he have done? Just told you, right from the beginning, that he was a harbinger? That he killed more people than he could count? He couldn't. He knew it was wrong. And yet he couldn't bring himself to. Because he would lose you. He would lose everything he wished for. And it was selfish. But it was his only choice. And you don't blame him. Because you knew... You would have done the same. You kiss him softly, your hands sneaking into his hair, stroking it gently. Skirmish, promise me now that you're not going to hide anything from me again. That's all I want. Why, Anne, I. Please, I want to give you a chance, so let me do that. He looked at you hesitantly with red rimmed eyes. But then. He mumbled quietly. Okay. I promise you. I will tell you everything you need to know. You give him a soft smile. A bit a little bit sad. I trust you, Skirmish. I really do. He said. Because with that look in his eyes, he didn't look like someone who would lie to you again. And, likewise, Skirmish trusted you not to break his heart once more.